on here all the way from the UK. What's going on, Elliot? How you doing, man? No, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right, doing all right. So uh, I got Elliot here who owns a management consulting company or management company for business or business yep. management company. I got my tongue all tied up. Imagine That's that. It. So uh wanted to talk to you about that because a lot of people who watch this channel, who listen to this podcast are, you know, starting their business or they're looking to scale. So I'm yep. sure you have tons of insight in there are on in that uh in that subject and the other yeah. thing i want to talk to you about which i just started it's podcasting yeah that's how we met your yeah, podcast definitely. that you launched not too long ago it's like climbing through the roof with listeners and followers and all that stuff so if somebody's looking to learn how to launch a podcast the correct way not like me who has two listeners oh, and has to do it the right way and scale it the right way uh elliot here is going to give us some pointers pointers on how to do it uh, but before we get into it, I, we need to find out. I like to ask uh, everybody to give me their background and how they became an entrepreneur and a business owner and why they did it. So how how did it all start for you, man? What what brought you down this road? Wow, God, how, how many got, have we got a good few hours to go over this a week? There's, 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 a, hell of a, there's a hell of a roller coaster. I got all day if you do, man. <laughs> Uh, where did it all start? Well, I suppose it started when I was when I was probably you know about eleven, twelve years old, working and uh, uh, you know in my in my family business's warehouse and uh, and just getting to grips with working and making things and selling them. I think that you go back to those early days. Uh, you know, I, 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 there wouldn't be an idle moment. You know, when Christmas is coming, you'd make some Christmas decorations or something and sell them to family. Right. I mean, that was just part of what I what I did, um, and then started working. I think. God, I was, well, I was probably sort of 12, about 13, 14. I would have had probably three jobs. So I'd have been delivering newspapers, standard stuff back in the day. I'm still is now. I'm working in a woodcraft place as well on weekends to get some extra money. And, you know, you do some other bits and pieces. And by the time I was sort of 15, 16, I probably had five jobs, you know, doing, doing different things. Listen, I like to go out, always have done ever since then. So how, was you, how are you going to get the money? You right, know, right. Even in, even in, the, <laughs> exactly. even in the early days, you've got to find a way. And I wasn't going to go and start robbing people because that's not my bag. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so so that so sort of started very early. Um, ended up going abroad for a couple of years. Uh, ran the bars in uh, in the south of Spain, uh, obviously in Europe, and uh, and had a great time doing that. Came back, had a, a little one. Um, but a child basically, which meant well, he's not so to... little anymore. I saw him on your life, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, well, how, how no, old is he? No, not that one. I've got a 23 year old as well. Oh, man, 23. I would have never, <laughs> you started early, man. I know, I would have never guessed that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and because so, so going back 20 odd years ago, that was you know, I've got a it's all well and good having no responsibility and going out and having fun and partying and running bars and things like that, but it's a lifestyle business that's never going to get you anywhere. And then right. you've got to start at the bottom again. So there was a family business to sort of try and get hold of something with. And over the next sort of 10 years, um, I went from working in the family business, trying to launch a product. Uh, this is actually back in the days when what was, um, what well, was inkjet, the ink, inkjet cartridge, cartridges, actually. The family business. Well, I launched a range of inkjet cartridges because the family business was based around photocopiers. Okay, so photocopying okay. industry was huge back in the day. Right. Um, that was probably one of the world's largest businesses. Everybody had a photocopier. So the family business was consumable parts. It was paper. It was the toner that you put in the machines. It was, you know, it was all of that sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, and a big big business in the uk uh but you know as things started changing and technology start and, and printers came in i saw a market of uh original inkjet cartridges of course were very very expensive you know still are to this day but third party or compatible as they were classed then cartridges were very very early days very early days so that's where the money's long... made is the ink, not the actual copy or the printer itself, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, they virtually give printers away these days. It's, the, it's where they make yeah. the money out of their cartridges. And so, you know, we're going back sort of 20, oh God, 20, 20 odd years ago. And uh, and so I launched this whole range of, pro of cartridges and I was going out. I didn't really have any massive sales experience. I'm knocking doors. There's a bank of customers, of course, that the family business had. So I tapped into those. You're going to go for your your immediate market and any business, email list. I love it. That's what I tell people the money's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. where you start. <laughs> Absolutely. And I did, you know, only probably 10% of their customers had maybe a shop or, um, you know, a desk or something in there. And so I created a countertop 
uh, display of cartridges. You put the cartridges on. Pretty standard these days. Nobody was doing it then. Okay, so so I was just going into news agents, like sort of you know corner shops, things like that. You know the sort of thing I mean, like Seven Elevens or whatever, and sort of and putting these in. But the quality was letting me down. Right, really, really annoying. I've done all this work, branding, and bringing this whole thing to to market. And my father, who I don't really call him that very often because I don't really talk to the guy anymore, and you'll probably understand why as we go through this this sort of uh, this roller coaster of uh, of, a, of a journey. But um, he had a supplier that supplied the product. Okay, so the raw cartridge and the inks, mm-hmm. and, I, and we were getting the, the boxes made and putting them together. But the product was letting us down. The quality was letting us down. He wouldn't change because of his relationship with the supplier. And I found a new supplier which could supply us the whole product finished, boxed, okay, and and delivered to us about 40% cheaper than we were paying elsewhere. But he wouldn't move. He wouldn't move from the supplier. Oh, my God. Ridiculous. Genuinely ridiculous. Got to a point where I was working for no money, as you do when you're trying to get these things going. And I'm a young entrepreneur at this stage. You know, I've got the... The, the, the foundations of a business there. All I've got to do is build my new area to it. You know, and there must be loads of people in family businesses that have got that. Um, I fought with my father over, over things, literally, like not fought as in we, we had a punch yes. up. <laughs> so but, my background, my dad and his dad, all entrepreneurs, businesses. I mean, my dad's company at one point had 4,500 employees. So, you know, wow. we worked together for a, for a, for a bit there. Yeah. Oh, and we just butted heads, man. We just butted heads. We still butt heads to this day, but we, I love him to death, obviously. Oh, um, good. No, we're good. But it's just like, I remember, it was just like, it wasn't that, you know, it's this is why they say don't work with your family. And even though he will listen to me and I will listen to him, but it's the yeah. new school to old school type of mentality type of deal, that which I'm I'm sure it will happen with Luca at some point when he grows up. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So that's basically it. It's just, uh, but. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I learned so much from my dad. It's, it's, it's crazy. So well, I, I get that, that relationship of working with family for sure. Well, I think it skipped a generation. My grandfather, I became very close to, and we are very, very similar. I mean, you know, what rest his soul he's, he's, he died a few years ago. Um, but he was, he was an inspiration to me. He, you know, he, he, he had a Rolls Royce. He had a lovely house with a swimming pool. I was brought up well. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to say that I wasn't, you know, I was, well, yeah. I was lucky to be brought up the way I was. Same here. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and ble- I'm blessed to have right. that, you know, really. But, um, but it definitely skipped a generation, which they often say. Uh, and I think I got my grandfather's genes. And, and unfortunately, as I found out through over the years, then my father had ridden off his coattails for many years, basically. Um, well, listen, I have a, I have a brother and a sister and uh, they're just, you know, they like their, their nine to five and they're happy and that's it. And then there's me. I'm just like, I have those genes from that side. I just, I guess they went like my mom, you know, but then I got that streak of genes of like, no, nah, I don't want to work for anybody else. You know, even yeah. though that I have in the past because I needed to. Oh, of course, uh, we all have. Yeah, but uh, I get that relationship. So, okay, so that happened, and, and then what? Yeah, what so on? I ended up. I mean, literally, I was butting heads with him all the time. It was it just wasn't working, and and I literally said, if you can't let me do what we need to do, which is a sensible option for the business and myself and the whole thing, then there's no point in me doing this any longer. So I, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. So I um I I I stepped away, and thought it's time that I um, one second. <laughs> you're good typical typical do apologize um yeah so i so i then um quickly realized that i needed to learn um in a corporate environment sales from the ground up so i got a job doing water coolers selling water coolers knocking doors and very basic selling but the best way the best way to learn you know it's a very difficult thing it's raining you're trying to sell somebody a water cooler in a hairdresser's for example <laughs> you know uh, it, it's you know what it, that, and then jenny that would be the sort of line i'd walk in and i'm going I'm, look i'm covered in more water i'm trying to sell you and it would just break the ice you know yeah, yeah. um and, and uh, you've got to think of something without it being cheesy but have a little element of some humor in it as well it's the way i roll right um so knocking doors for sure. I tell people all the time when it comes to sales, man, if you knock on doors or you start cold calling, you'll learn sales quick because, oh, without a doubt. you know, without a doubt. you got to think on, on your feet right away and people are not happy when you're just calling them out of nowhere or knocking yeah. on the door. So you gotta, yeah, yeah. that's how you work up those sales skills for sure. 
it is it is and i did that for probably 18 months until i i outstripped everybody else that was selling i'm not being big headed when i say these things i'm just being really honest with you uh, and and i'd sort of outgrown the position already i'd got one i needed to get from it i'm a sponge i take a lot of stuff in and all i want to do is level up right so then then uh, through an agency i then got a job for a company called neo post in america you your, your pitney bows are are the frankie machine company so they're the, the machines that's that's to put a stamp on the envelope so you mm -hmm. send them out in bulk so it was a mailroom, mailroom supplies, basically, and machines. Um, and I got in, I was there for about three or four years. So again, next level up, you are knocking doors, but you've got accounts to deal with. You're dealing with receptionists, you're dealing with postroom people. You're then dealing with maybe operations directors, FDs, managers, depending on what the, the need is for that business, you're dealing with every level. And, and so I learned a lot from that process and moved up very quickly in the sort of ranks, so to speak, that, with that company as well. And um, again, then, I, then after a few years, I'd done a bit of public sector, which is dealing with councils and schools and things like that as well. Of course, a different cell, different mindset, different mentality. And you've got to think about um, uh, budgets at a certain time of year. So it's a very different sales cycle as well. So again, I'd sort of then built this sort of rounded idea of how to deal with people at all levels of business. And was I the best at that point? You know, to a certain level in the industry I was in, yeah, I was in, in the sort of top few, I suppose, but nowhere near in the best world worldwide as in global business owner, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, so with me, with me, uh, when it came to moving up in sales, right, uh, you know, my own stuff and, and when I did work for other people, my when you start moving up in sales, when you start getting that experience and you, and, and you move to another job or you start your own company, now you're dealing, you want to go after the big money. So you start dealing with this big company. That was like the hardest thing for me to deal with. What's the sales cycle yeah. where before you get that, that instant gratification, you know, of making a sale. Now it takes three months, six months, eight months down the road, depending on the type of contract and the amount of money, because it has to be approved by a million people and then they have to figure it out and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I think that's what drove me back to like, when digital, when I found the world of digital, I was like, I love this. It's like instant. <laughs> you yeah, know? So yeah. it's like a dopamine the rush. Yeah. There's nothing better than getting that notification on your phone in real time that a sale came through. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah. I mean, I turn off my Shopify notification thing because it goes nuts all day long. But oh, I mean, really? sometimes I'm not going to lie. I sit there. I just turn it on just to hear it. But yeah, it's great, man. So what, do you, awesome. do, what do you do on Shopify then? I got a, I got a couple of brands. Couple okay. brands. I, I'm not going to say in here because anybody is going to go searching for them and steal the product from <laughs> the ad, but I can't say the names. Okay. But I have two brands, two brands. Okay. One I literally just launched two weeks ago and that one's already doing well. And one I had for, for years and years and years, but oh. I've, I've had like one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, five total. Right. And the first three, I, uh, the first three, hold on. The first two sell, uh, failed. The, because I was learning the third right. one I sold, right? The fourth one I sold as well. And then I have the other two that I still have to this day. The one that I just okay. launched and the other one that I have to this day. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the launch of the other one. And we'll talk about that off air. I'll be honest. I'll show you that behind the scenes. I have no problem showing you that, but I'm not going to say it on here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah, how, yeah, I know sure. how the internet works. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, cool. So what made you, so after doing all of that, that's when you yeah. decided to start the management well, firm? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's more. I want to hear this. There is, there is. Um, in fact, I'm going to be doing a series on these things. So you, you, you should interview me on one of those, mate. As well. I will, I will. Um, but um, yeah, so no, I got to a point then. I, I, I then, um, I, obviously I was speaking to my father again. You know, we obviously, you know, we party company and I did my own thing and I learned and built myself up. Um, but we, we, you know, we had contact and we were in contact again and we became sort of, you know, closer. Um, and we had a little bit of a fireworks business. So um, it was, you know, it's obviously only seasonal. Um, and I was wanting to pull away from the corporate sort of world. And I'd been working in the business for like three or four years. So I, I don't know what it, I, I went through a bit of a weird stage of buying containers full of full of stuff right so oh, there'll be so you were reselling whatever it was well inside. yeah oh. yeah didn't i was really massively unsuccessful i bought these four containers full of wooden pieces furniture pieces what that, that i i don't listen i i i hadn't i didn't have to pay for them i just had to pay for the storage of them and right. then it was a matter of going through them and i'm not being funny we are talking about tons and tons and tons of le table legs lo tops 
I'm sorry, oh, just uh, it was ridiculous. I mean, just the well, I know for a fact because I'm in this world that a lot of people make a lot of money reselling stuff on eBay and all that stuff. Yeah. So, but I can't even imagine sorting through containers of oh, furniture. Oh, that was awful. Pieces. It was horrible. I mean, there was points where you're thinking, "Why am I doing this?" But, <laughs> but do you know, do you know what? And I still, to this day, I still say it. Is that and I, and I and I have these moments. I right. knew that I knew it was going somewhere else. I knew that wasn't what it was about. But I had to go through that process. And right. in going through that process, I then found um, because I was looking for somewhere to sell fireworks out of because the season was coming up. Um, and I had a contact basically to, that could supply them like wholesale. Uh, so I, I then got there was this empty shop not far from where I lived. And and it had been empty and had planning permission on it, right? So this guy was basically just waiting for the plans to be approved, okay, mm -hmm. before he was going to build whatever he was going to build on the site. So I rented this shop, very cheap. Uh, and that then led on to quite a successful little fireworks business for two or three months, brought a decent amount of pocket money in, um, thousands of pounds, in fact. We do actually, actually smashed it. Uh, I was doing midnight runs, filling a van up with fireworks like two, two or three times a week. It was mad. And ended up believe it or not, with my father, again, buying the shop and um, changing the plans to go from a five bed, uh, sorry, a five uh, unit development, one building mm -hmm. of apartments into a seven because I used wanted to be an architect when I was at school. So I saw some extra spaces, went to the architect, played about with it, got them approved. And it should have been it should have been quite successful. But we were 2007 when we started that. So you know what's going to come next, don't you? Yeah, because I went through it with my yeah. you first quote-unquote brick-and-mortar business. Yeah, and yeah. I was in my early 20s just living the life, buying bottles at the club and cars yeah. and the yeah. house. And yeah. yeah, I know exactly what happened in that year because I went right through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so a year, a year and a half into the build, the whole world comes crashing down, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. yeah. Prices plummet. Um, the, they're not selling. I, I manual literally sold them myself rather than going to any agent. So I started an online account and, and created almost like an agency. Anyway, this, the, the whole bill went on for a couple of years. Um, and it was seven, you know, seven flats, nice, you know, penthouse apartment and blah, 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 not a huge site, but it was good. It was great. I'd never built anything in my life either, to be fair. And I was right. on site every single day with the builders. Oh, that's I got tough, them to man. use me as their laborer. I said, I'm never going to learn how to do this if I don't get learn from the bottom up. Right. And, and I use this. In You're like me, man. You get dirty. I love it. That's how I am. I was like, I need to learn it. And then, you know, once I know what's going on, I'll, I'll be more than happy to hand it off to somebody who's an expert and, and deal with it. You know what I mean? Exactly. But well, at least could... I know what's going on. Yeah. And you have to, because if you've never been through it, how can you actually say to somebody, well, I need this doing this doing and this doing and not and understand the process if you've never really done it yourself. For so example. Might... Right. So for example, like I'm, I'm, an expert. I hate calling myself an expert on Facebook ads, but I mean, I've been doing it since they went public. Like I know yeah. Facebook ads inside and I have plenty of results. This whole channel is mostly Facebook ads, you know, yeah. and I showed some of the accounts in here. Um, do I know Google ads? Yeah, I know Google ads, but I know the basics of Google yeah. ads. I know how it works. Yeah. But if you came to me and say, Christian, I want you to know, I'm like, no, I'd be like, go talk to my friend here because I'm not, I, I just, I'm not. Yeah. And that's what you got to recognize as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, what you're good at and what you're not. Yeah. Could I learn Google Ads? Sure, but you you know how many years it would take me to to really learn Google Ads? They're yeah. real, like to be an expert. It's years. It never ends. Yeah. So I'd rather focus on one thing that I know I'm an expert at and dab a little bit in the others just to see what's going on. Yeah, 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 definitely. And that yeah, way, no yeah. one can bullshit me. And I can just hand it over to the person that knows what they're doing. Yeah. You, you, I think I think the way I look at it, you, if, if, as long as you know the concept and you understand the concept and you understand right. the process roughly, then you can direct stuff. It's not about managing. You won't manage that, but you'll be able to direct. You'll get the right people to manage something, so to speak. I think that's the way I tend to see it. Um, and I get quite a good, very quick bird's eye view or helicopter view, I prefer to call it these days, right. of, of, of a business in a situation, which is why, obviously, it helps me to help my, you know clients that we have. But... Um, yeah, you don't need to know everything. You just need to under, under, just have a good understanding. And if you very much like you, if you've been on the ground and you've learned it that way, it's way easier for you to understand all sorts of elements of the business. Um, when you've been lucky and you've, not so necessarily lucky, but you've been in a position and then you've got there and then you've known a manager and you've become a CEO of a business and you've been there for years. Not The problem is these guys don't know as much as they think they know because they only know a process that they fit in into the cogs of the business. 
So people like you and I, where you get in and you get dirty, that's that is the best way to learn and, and by mistakes as well. I think for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's if you if you got to do it from the ground up. And that's, you know, that's another thing that I didn't understand back in the day when I worked for my dad. It's like I didn't just go walk in there and got like the greatest job in the company. It was like yeah. I was the bottom of the bottom of the bottom and I had to work my way up. And that was like, yeah. you know, I didn't get it at the time, but now I do, obviously, you know? yeah. <laughs> because I will do the same with my son. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got to learn it the right way, man. You have, you have, you've got to be, you've got people have, they've got to, they've got to earn their, earn their keep, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. For sure. So yeah. what happens after that? Yeah. So that, that, that drew everything to a, mm -hmm. to a close, you know, the, 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 the development, obviously that got finished off and, and, and I stepped, I walked away, you know, I, I, you know, that, that, that ran any ties that I had with my father was done. Um, and, uh, you know, what do you do? There was no, there's no jobs going. It's, you know, we we're in the middle of the in the middle of the biggest crash there'd been for, you know, a long, long time. Right. Uh, so, what do I do? I mean, I, you know, I, I actually started driving a, a driving a van and delivering some bits and pieces just to earn a little bit of money to start off with because I had like, literally no money. I'd, I'd spent up, I overspent, in fact, for a couple of years. Um, not what I meant overspent is in going out partying, but just overspent on loans and things like that to survive. Right. Um, and then a very good friend of mine who's in the video games industry uh, Art said to me, look, why don't you come and work with me uh, in the company? Um, and he knows I can buy and sell. And he was importing, exporting video games, controllers. Uh, it was, we, Wii's were a big thing at the time, huge, in fact. So we're going back like 10 years ago. Right. And, um, and so I did. I, I went to work with him. And within no time, I'm making contacts, you know, globally. It's a big global market. And just got into it. You know, I'm moving lorry loads of Wii consoles. We're splitting out. You buy Wii packages, which had a sports resort in it, if anybody remembers that. I remember that. And you'd buy the two together. But the client, one of the customers I had, which is a huge online retailer in the Nordics, okay, in Sweden, um, wanted them separately. So I'm making more money by splitting them up and serrated edges and all that. So we're, so we're sort of breaking boxes, basically, and selling the product and, and stuff like that. Nothing that's really, but it's gray market product, okay? And if everybody doesn't know what that is, is buying from an official supplier in a country, for example, that maybe can't move that quantity of stock. So they'll sideways move it to a partner of theirs in the same country or another country, and then you move that stock on. It's The world works with gray market product in every arena it's just the way it works you know right um and so i had 10 years in the video games industry set my company up which is now called forge management as you said earlier on but actually set it off of, off the back of something my grandfather said that he did when he first set his business up was to set, set a business name up and worked out of the offices of some friends of mine and i named my business similar to theirs so that when the receptionist answered the phone they said, enjoy, enjoy, uh, can I help you? And my company was called Enjoy It Entertainment, and their company was called Enjoy Information Technology. So it sort of, it sort of <laughs> That's worked. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it made me look like I, I, I had a larger company than I was. Right. Uh, but I work, still worked as a, as, a, as a sort of a consultant. I was doing deals here and there until one of the guys in the industry sort of said, look, I want to get you involved with my business. And then I started helping departments grow i sort of get in i'd be buying and selling and doing doing that and then and worked in a couple of businesses in the industry doing that and sort of helping to build the company up and i was a one-man band consultant so i'm earning fairly good money for being a sales guy for my own company um but it was just me working for it you know yeah. and then sort of 2013 came along and uh, and I'd worked with one guy very, very closely. Uh, we'd worked you know, actually over like two or three years, worked very closely together. I'd parted with, from a mate's business. So things had changed over two or three years. And uh, some outside investors from Australia wanted to set up a, a company in the UK to distribute and sell and wholesale, basically. So there was myself and this other guy that, that in essence, were brought in to build this company up from scratch. Half a million investment. Uh, and we took that that company to just under 20 million turnover in three years. Um, so it sort of grew rapidly. Uh, and that was literally, I'm um, genuinely, you talk about start and scale up. Yeah. That was everything that I'd ever learned all into one. Um, you know, working in an empty warehouse off the floor, packing boxes, to then getting a, a pump truck 
and then getting some racking and then putting an office in there and like literally from the ground up, you know, doing that. And you were, yeah. we're constantly selling. We're constantly trading on Blackberries at the time. Yeah. You know, we're, we're awesome. on them all the time, 24-7 on Blackberries. It's like right. trading money, but you're trading commodity product. Uh, yeah. Video games, you get three or four pallet loads of video games. There's a lot of money there, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot of that's what I was saying earlier. A lot of people make a lot of money reselling on eBay and like yeah. local marketplaces, like on Facebook and stuff like that. They go to like thrift stores or, you know, dollar stores or garage sales and, you yeah. know, they pick up all this stuff and then they resell it, especially yeah. with sneakers, with shoes, you know? Yeah. So. Oh yeah, it's a big market if you know what you're doing. I, I, I just I would suck at that. I know that <laughs> I don't have the eye for it. Well, we didn't. We weren't. We weren't end selling it. We weren't retailing. So we were supplying other wholesalers around the world. Um, and I, I had contacts in Dubai. So I was selling and buying, selling into Dubai, buying from Dubai, selling in and into Australia and buying people, from Australia. People don't understand the. You know, I lived overseas, so it's like I get it that. People don't have access to the stuff that we do, like yeah. in places like the U.S. I can literally gra grab a container and send it to Colombia and make like ten times what it's worth. Yeah, if I wanted to, but I just not something I want to do. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to know the people over there too, who to yeah. sell these containers to and all that stuff, so you can resell it. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is is building that network of of contacts up. Right. Um, and and a tip I would give, and I've I've had to do this with a client um uh, of mine recently who's actually in the industry. Uh, is that don't make yourself too busy. If you're getting into a market, never make yourself too busy that you get to know absolutely everyone. Find out what people are doing, but do not, if you, particularly if you want a resale product or you're going to be a middleman, which is very difficult these days because getting that bit of margin is not as easy as it used to be because you get a lot of, let's say, official guys will sell straight into retail these days, whereas 10, 20 years, 15 years ago, that didn't happen. They always used to sell to a distributor who would then sell it on. So things have changed in the world market, the way business is done. But yeah, never get too busy getting to know absolutely everybody if you want to buy products, because if they know you don't know everybody, what they, why are they going to sell to you? It's, right. it's, it's a bit of a funny one because you, wanna, you want to know everybody, but you can't buy and sell to absolutely everybody, can you? It's better to have really good relationships and same buy with, and sell with the right people. Same with the, the that I tell, you know, my consulting clients and all that. It's like, okay, you want to go into the digital world, you got to niche down. You can't sell to everyone. And trust yeah. me when I tell you, when you niche down, you know, it's not like you're niching down to 20 people. <laughs> you're yeah. niching down to millions of people. So it's like a huge piece of the pie. Definitely. I'd rather have three stores that are completely niched down to like, you know, instead of fitness, no, kickboxing, jujitsu, like that niche down yeah. and have another one for kickboxing and have another one for, I don't know, skateboarding. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Yeah. Then yeah. trying to be like generic sports good store because then yeah. my targeting is diluted. And trust me, you can scale to the moon when you niche it down. So it's the yeah. same concept when it comes yeah. to your stuff, right? Yeah, I think we 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 did niche. I mean, my my uh, my area, my strength was always in in hardware. So PS4s, uh, Xboxes, uh, controllers, uh, yeah. ac accessories. That was my my for some reason that was where my my niche was in the business. And the guy that I ran the business with, and we worked very well together, was different. He was very much video games. It was PC codes. Right. Uh, we were we were code farming, so we were stripping codes out from boxes. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not <laughs> being funny. Awesome. We'd have we'd have me. Uh, there'd be like six, six or seven of us in a warehouse opening pallets up, stripping games down, taking codes, scanning them, and selling them to the on online resellers. Um, massive, massive market. You know, we're talking five or six years ago it's huge it's it's the publishers it's still pretty have, big still the pretty big. but the publishers have screwed down now they they sell them digitally and stuff whereas sure. they weren't doing it so much then so we sort of in essence i suppose probably helped to bring that digital market up people like us that's um, crazy man that's so yeah. cool yeah yeah so so there were good times and it's a great industry they're a very sociable industry you know we go to e3 in california uh in la once a year um initially no, that's awesome off. man i love e3 i love it I you love been it. there yeah yeah one time man i love it like oh, it's so cool when you get to see like this game that you've been winning for forever yeah and they finally show you that little glimpse and you're like yes <laughs> you know i mean obviously i don't have the time to play games like i used to but yeah. when i play a game i'll play a game like yeah. you know like for example when gta 5 came out and red dead 2 came out it's like Everybody else, I'm out for at least a week. Leave yeah. me alone. 
And it's like a movie. To me, it's a movie. It's a movie experience that lasts 50 hours, however long it is, because the stories are so good. Yeah, of course. But, you know, after wa working in, in front of a PC 12, 16 hour days, the last thing I want to do is play a game after I'm done sitting down <laughs> in front of the three screens that I have in front of me. Well, I, listen, I was never I was never into video games, believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I hardly ever play them. So well, I was I, in the industry and I'm yeah. deep into the industry and I'm known sort of in the industry as well globally um, and never played it. But then I had a market stall, which I missed out completely selling golf equipment many, many years ago, like 20 years ago. Yeah. And I cannot do a play around a golf. Genuinely, I have no idea how to play golf. Um, well, here, so I give you a little secret out of the stores that, that became successful and the ones that failed, believe it or not, the ones that failed are the ones that were my passionate hobbies. The ones that succeeded yeah. are the ones where I listened to what the market wanted, not what I wanted. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a really interesting point. And probably the same as what I've done over the years as and well. I know yeah. I'm inside out, but it's like, you know, it's everybody's like, follow your passion. Yeah, to a point. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? No, yeah, not all yeah. the way. So, all right. So video games. And yeah. what's after that, man? I feel like there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there was. I mean, listen, I got a little bit disheartened from the industry. The industry changed. They, you know, things changed. Uh, they brought VAT into into uh, or value added tax. So tax. You know. Uh, so you when know, did you? Is... When did you? When? When did you? went fall on the on the management side of things? Well, that, that that when that when when I decided that I wanted something scalable of my own, I would help build, build people build businesses for years. So it was literally that stage. I'm like. Where what do I do? And I've got a business that I was a one man bank consultant. What do I then do to 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 move this onto another level? So right. it was like selling a service. I've been selling products for years in essence. Yeah. You know, literally that's all I've been doing for many years. Whatever whatever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so then to then to learn how to sell a service, I I had to go and get some coaching and I, and I had to listen. I could do it if I had a long conversation with somebody. Of course, I can sell myself, right? Right. But doing it when you need to do it quickly in a market that is very is a lot quicker these days and getting mm -hmm. your points across was something I had to take some learning. I just had to take some advice from and learn. I've done it um, twice. I have two mentors, man. I'm still yeah. with one of them. I mean, I'm in touch with them whenever I want to because once you pay a pretty, pretty, you know, good price, you have yeah. access. But I, I tell people all the time, it's like find a mentor, man. I don't care if it's paid, non-paid or whatever. Somebody who's doing better than you and just keep moving yeah. up the ladder and – there's a lot of scammers out there, so do your research and a lot of good oh, stuff. Sure. But when you find the right coaching with the right program, it's a whole different ball game. I yeah. mean, Loger, John Loger is one of my mentors. He's, you know, he 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 changed my life to a point when it comes to sales. I thought I knew sales until I yeah. fucking met him. It was just like a whole <laughs> different level, yeah. like a whole different level. Yeah. And my sales just skyrocketed, you know, on meetings and the phones just because of the stuff that I learned from him. And it's not like tactics or anything like that. It's just real sales, you know, yeah. that I thought I knew from reading books and stuff like that. And, you know, he's learned from the best of the best out there, you know, and, and from when it comes to digital, I mean, he has Dan Kennedy on speed dial. Oh, really? I don't know if you, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you know who Dan Kennedy is. Yeah, yeah, but Dan yeah, yeah. Kennedy, it's like w the greatest, one of the greatest marketers out there. Let's just put it this way. Russell learned from him. That's all I'm going to say. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think a call with Dan Kennedy or a day with Dan Kennedy, if I remember correctly, is twenty thousand dollars for like six what? hours in his bunker. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, man. And you gotta. It's not that you just pay and go. Like you have to be you good enough to even go over there and. Yeah, to even be considered. Yeah. So Lover's been there, and I I got this. You know, I got access to one of the meetings, right? Interviews, and uh, he picks you up in his Rolls Royce, takes you to his compound. We have this like racing horses and all that stuff, and it's yeah. so cool. Like. I mean, it's one of the people that I admire. I have like a million books by him behind me. I love that. I but love that. Uh, so, all right. So we're going to de derailed here. But uh, the the management, what type of clients are you taking on now? So when, you know, how to. Oh, mate. When I first how did started. you scale it? Because obviously you started by yourself. So how did you start even scale yeah, it? Like well, I'll be honest with you. I took all the wrong people on, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we, and I think we had a conversation briefly about this before when we did, a, did, did something before. It, it, you do. You 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 sort of you know you can help people, so you get involved with them, and they get you in, and they're all like, "Yeah, this is this sounds great." And then suddenly, they want you to run their bloody business for them. I mean, I'm right. like, what what you know where where has it gone from this? And you, they want you on call all the time. That's fine, but you know it's worth. It, when it I started. Costs. When I started offering, um, you know, running advertising for companies, when it started becoming, you know, when people are like, oh, this Facebook thing is for real. Yeah. I started with small businesses because at the time I was like, well, start with the small ones and move up to the big ones. Big mistake. Uh, because they want you to run, 
like I found myself basically telling them how to run their business. Some of them didn't Always. even know their numbers. I'm like, yeah. okay, your CPA is X. What's your AOV, average order value? What's your LTV, lifetime value? So if yeah. I bring you a customer for X, how much are you getting out of it? And some of them didn't even know their numbers, dude. And I will grill them. I'm like, you got to know your numbers, like, yeah. you know? So I was, I moved quick away from that because I'm like, I'm not here to run your whole business. I'm yeah. doing the advertising and marketing side of things, the yeah. digital, yeah. you know, not all of it. So, and yeah, I'm yeah. sure you run into the same problem, but they, next thing you know, you're running their whole thing. Oh, I, I, and completely. And that, and that was, and I, and I was sort of getting quickly getting back into doing the wrong thing. So then it took a little bit of sort of, I actually genuinely pulled back off to dealing with two or three clients. I was like, this isn't working for either of us. This is what I'm going to do for you. And let me give you some stuff to work with. And you just crack on. If you want to come back at a later date, then fine. But we just, it just doesn't, re it doesn't really work. So then I went through a couple of months or two, or quite a few months of, of actually no money coming in at all. Because I was like, the, I'm, I'm going to get myself into a comp completely the wrong situation with any client if I don't figure out what it is that I'm doing. Because I'm going to networking. And, and, and a lot of people, lots of people do this. Again, we talked about it earlier on, trying to be everything for everybody. You, there's no good. You're better off being something for somebody. And and the, the thing was, is I, even when I was doing networking, is they weren't quite clear about what I did because I'm, I know that I'm able to do so much. So you're trying to deliver all of that to somebody in a conversation in sort of 10 minutes. And they're like, I really like you, but I don't know how I'm going to recommend you because you sort of do this, 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 this and this. Right. So then I, I sort of had to change and I was going, just, I just want to support management. I just want to work with the management team, be part of your management team so I can help you make decisions, make, make you help the structure, get to a point where you've got operational excellence, be a, make things a more effective and efficient. And that's where we want to work. Now, once I'm in there doing that, you're going to find other areas to work with. Um, but again, it still wasn't necessarily the right clients. It's definitely been the right clients in the last six, 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 eight months. Um, but the first year or so was difficult. And I know so many people doing, going into consultancy that haven't really done it before that go through exactly the same pain um, no. because we know what we're capable of. And so you try to deliver that to the person that stood in front of you. It's a difficult Yeah. Thing like to I feel like when I did it back then, I felt like it was, I was not servicing my client by letting them know what I knew that would yeah. help them. Because yeah. I thought it will help me in the long run to bring them the results that they wanted. Yeah. But the problem is when you do it that way and you don't charge for it on top of what you're doing, yeah. they take it for granted. Yes. So I learned away. quick to double my prices and charge for it because now they're listening. You yeah. Know? So yeah, yeah. It's part of it. So obviously you created the podcast to put content yeah. out there because content's the name of the game. That's why we're here. It is. And you just launched that new not too long ago, and it's like skyrocketed and subscriptions and, and listens and all that stuff. So let's talk about the podcast, man. So uh, how yeah. did the idea came about? Like you just woke up on this, I'm going to do a podcast. <laughs> well, not, not quite. I was walking into E3 actually and ended up having breakfast with a, with a guy who was from Florida, who was a sound engineer, Brian Campbell, very, very good friend of mine, one of my best mates, in fact. Um, and uh, we just ended up having breakfast, kept in contact. Um, and this was like four years ago. Uh, so the year before last, a couple of years ago now, he was saying, oh, you should do it. I was doing lives and things like this. And I, uh, and he said, you should do a podcast. And it took me about six, eight months to get my head around it. I'd listen yeah. to house music on podcasts for years. You're from and Europe. Of course you do. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but good quality house music. Um, yeah. and, uh, and that's what I'd done for years. So that's all I knew about podcasts genuinely at that time uh and so uh so yeah we so we were talked and it, we, and the, the thing developed it was originally going to be forge management radio uh but being here in essex in the uk it seemed like a an easier thing to stick as a name rather than come up with a name that only my clients or people that knew me immediately give it the name of an area and suddenly you sat you have a bit of standing don't you and it sort of gives yeah, you a little bit of weight right um and yeah it just became i was doing podcasts with small business owners talking to them about you know how they've bit like this really their journey and they'd come and sit in here. And I swear, surprisingly, hardly sworn at all on this one, to be fair. Uh, I swore but... more than you have. And I, sh I should know better because it's my YouTube channel. So I get penalized by that. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, do you do. You? Oh, yeah. really? Do you get penalized for it? Oh, no, you don't get really penalized. But then advertisers, you know, that they have the option to pull back depending on how much you swear. Uh, 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 but... Who cares? I better I better find <laughs> advertisers that like swearing then. <laughs> there, there's some, but it's not the same uh, CPMs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Depending on the brand, you know they, wanna, they uh, want to. They want cleaner. 
they want cleaner yeah but yeah i don't care this is not my main source of income so whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well I've, I've held back on the swearing anyway i'll but, go so, for it yeah, if so, you need to <laughs> so, that was, so that was a very real sort of thing you know sit back it was like fireside chat sit back and chill and and, and get to know people and then of course we got to know each other because i put a post out on a on a group with regards to who would like to come on and have a chat about COVID-19 and you know how that's impacted you and how you've changed and ideas you've got for other people and and there that was you know, nearly nearly well a month and a half ago when we first spoke and developed yeah. a, 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 a global community of people that have come together and, and created friendships like uh, you know you and I have, have created across the pond for um, sure uh, and 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 it's now sort of as you said is is blowing up with with that it was a great subject matter I didn't want to it wasn't that's not why I did it. I was genuinely interested in what other people were doing. It's um, the same reason why I do it. Like I like to hear everybody's stories and I like everybody's like, you know, some people's like, oh man, he, why don't you just go right into it? I'm like, there's plenty of people that do that. I, I'm more interested in learning about people, like their yeah. journey. Like, yeah. and it, you know, if you go back and listen to all the episodes, uh, all what is it now? 16, 17, I think we're on. 17, um, you said, which is uh, 17, which is, yeah, that's which right. Which is my one of my lucky numbers, seven and seventeen. So there you good. go you'll notice a pattern on everyone that I've had on that to, to success. We all work really hard and then you see the pattern in our personalities if you really dissect it. And that's why yeah. I do it just to find out it's like, wow, they're just like me or they, they did the same, the, the same thing that I did, you know, and, and yeah. you pay attention, you'll learn a lot from it. So for the people that want to start a, a, a podcast, I just learned, you just told me about a platform it's called StreamYard. So, yeah. Yeah. so when you did research, you know, what, what are the, People ask all the time, like, what platform should I use? Where should I host it? Blah, okay. blah, blah, blah. So, so what do you recommend for people out there? Well, I, well, I learned quite a lot from my from my friend, obviously, who's the sound engineer. He does podcasts, music podcasts. So I, so I basically learned from him. So that was good. Find somebody that's already does it um, and, and get some as much information. But there's loads of stuff online, loads of stuff. I personally am much better speaking to people and learning that way. That's how I work. Um, but I'd always pick up stuff. So Anchor was, well, we actually, I think we tried, we did something else to start off. It didn't work very well, but Anchor, uh, Anchor was the one that, um, uh, that we basically use. Um, it takes a, about three to four weeks to distribute across on, on the right channels. So, um, so, so that's what we do on that side. Now, when we first started, we just started recording and putting them up there and doing a post, um, and, and just really learning as we went. I would say the best thing to do is because most it took me about three months to actually start recording and had all the equipment set up and the studios here. Just do it um, and do it. Just record a few with somebody, you know, get them to just sit down with them and just record a conversation. Just chat shit. Do whatever you want to do, because the more you do it, you'll get into the flow of how you want to to figure it out. You can go on, listen to other people's podcasts Um the only problem with listening to lots of people's podcasts is you start to think that you need to fit into somebody else's way of doing things. Um, just like business, have your differentiator. What is it that you want to get out there and how you want to do it and stick to what you feel is right? Because if it feels comfortable and you feel confident, then you're clear in what you're doing. And I think that's one of the best things I can say to starting a podcast off. Would you agree with that, Christian? Oh, a hundred percent. I tell people all the time, like right now, YouTube is the gold rush of YouTube, where the algorithm actually shows everyone and gives you a chance to be in front of the right people. And it's about personality. You know, some people yeah. are going to click with you just like you have friends and you have people yeah. that don't like you. It's the exact same thing. There's going to be people out there you're going to click with and there's people out there that you're not going to click with. But trust me when I tell you, if you're consistent about putting everything out there, you people will find you. I mean, people yeah. listen to my to this podcast. People watch my YouTube channel. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's not because I know Facebook ads and all that stuff. There's plenty of other people that do what I do. I'm not the yeah. only one in the world. I wish yeah, I was, but I'm not, you know? Exactly. And it's like, and I know who my quote unquote competitors are. I don't see them really as competitors, but I keep an eye on what they're doing. Yeah. And we're completely different people the way we explain things, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think there's people out there who are more speak really proper and they're very professional in their videos. And then there's me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have time to 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 spend eight hours on a YouTube video when I can just give you the information raw. Yeah. You know, I I really run Facebook ads for clients in my own stuff, so I don't have time to sit there and edit videos all day long and make it look perfect. Exactly. Maybe one day the, the 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 YouTube channel keeps growing, then I'll hire a whole production crew. But as of now, this is what you get, and people love it. People love it. I had people tell me I love yours because it's raw. 
Yeah. Like you just go and explain it right away. I'm like, awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you're watching. So yeah. No, I, and I think that's a, I think that's the best way, and it's the, the the natural raw way is 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 the way that I've worked, and I think that's probably why we get on and yeah, um, you know, and I lo- I love that approach. Uh, yeah, so so I I've learned over the last six months, learned a hell of a lot, and learning everything every every day. Um, Streamyard, yeah, br- brilliant means that you can do overlays, uh, you can get a, you know a guest on. In essence, you can produce while you're recording. Uh, rather than having to then basically take the raw video, or raw, raw video basically the MP4, and mm-hmm. then basically put an intro and things like that, you can you can put um, obviously you can put lower thirds in and things like that. So you've got you can play around with it. Streamyard is very good. It's free for distributing on one channel. I think it's a it's a small cost for distributing on two. And if you I want to distribute on more, then the price goes up again. Uh, but yeah, absolutely check it out. It's it's great. We use it. Uh, and, Let me ask uh, you something on uh, on tagging. Is it the mm-hmm. same as YouTube when it comes to the keywords that you tag on the actual podcast side of, side of things? How does the tagging works when it comes to podcasts? Is it the same? Because I noticed that I'm using Sp- uh, Spreaker, I think it's called. Okay. And when you do the tags, you can't do two words for one tag. So what I've been doing is like I, I, I just write it all together as one word. Okay. And it seems to be working. So I was wondering. Is this on, on YouTube? Are you talking about? No, no, no. Spreaker. The on, oh, so the tags on the actual. So on your distributor platform. Yes. So you use Spreaker, and I use obviously use Anchor. Um, do you know what? Let me be honest with you. I haven't even tagged yet. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was only it was only the other night that I'm thinking. Every time I scroll down to add the add the uh, the artwork, I, I the, the tag bo- bo- box is there. I must really find out about that. Oh, you need to start tagging. I can tell you right now. Start tagging. Just fill out the whole box with whatever is related to the podcast. So what you right. would do is, so let's say this is the way I've been doing it. It seems to be working for me. Okay? okay. So what I do is like, so I will go, I just open up Google or you can yeah. use a tool like SEM, uh, SEM Rush or right. Keyword Tool by Google, which is free. Okay. And you look up the tags of what your uh, podcast is about. So okay. if we're talking about business, just type in in the box, uh, you know, uh, how to scale your business. And then you know how Google gives you the suggestion? Yeah, yeah. That's what people are searching for. So that's why you yeah. want your tags yeah, at first, yeah. you know, because that's what they're looking for. So yeah, that's cool. Help your yeah. rank. Uh, and just make sure you have long descriptions. But well, that's the way I do it. I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure if you did it a different way or not. So that's why I was. No, well, well, listen, I've just, again, listen, you've never stopped learning. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're we're in our infancy at the moment. I mean, we're, we're six months into podcasting. Jet- but yours well. blew up, man. Yours uh, blew well, up from it's, that. It's it, crazy. It, it's, you know, we've done, I've done seven, 70, I think we've hit 70 podcasts now or just just about. Um, so, the, again, I'm, this is this is the thing. I, I If I'm going to learn something, I've got to be able to do it. I've got to go and do that. And now I'm really learning even more and we're, we're finding better ways of, of tweaking it and, and making it better. And I think that's the great thing with being creative, whether it be audio or video or doing podcasts, audio, video podcasts, which is definitely class of two things now. Um, you, you can be creative with it. There's always going to be something else you can add on, another intro or, or whatever that you can create. And, and that's what I love about it. It definitely grabs my, my, uh, my creative side. Um, and, it, and it gets your name out there. So I yeah, mean, it makes it all worth it. So listen, man, we're out of time. I got calls to get on. We oh went a little bit over, but it's all good. It was fun. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I loved it. So Elliot, thank you so much for coming on, man. I love your story. I love everything you're doing. The podcast, like I said, it's blowing up. So everybody needs to check it out. They need to look up your, your company if they need uh, consulting management. So where can people find you? And I'm, I'm going to put the links in the description as well. Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. On Facebook, um, it's Forge Management, and uh, you can find Essex Business Radio uh, on Facebook as well and Instagram. Uh, it's in fact across all platforms. It's Essex Business Radio, apart from Twitter, which is Essex Biz Radio, B I W Z Radio. Um, yeah, we're just we're just trying to grow and trying to put as much content out there to help uh, business owners with new ideas, new series, which uh, you're definitely going to be coming on as well. Oh, that's uh, right. We're going to do a new series you told me about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be sending over the info to that of just literally finalizing things. We've started recording already, so it's all about pivotal and new ideas and things like that. So uh, for to help people in their business, so it's it's all cool. And uh, and you've got huge amounts of experience in, and uh, uh, and stuff for that. As, so I'm really looking forward to talking to you on that side as well. But sure, you know, man. it's been an absolute pleasure. My first podcast with somebody else. I've loved it. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. And keep doing your thing. Uh, like you said, I'm going to be part of the new series that you're doing. And, Definitely. and guys, look it up. Just Google it, SX Business Radio. I'll put the links in the description. And, and trust me when I tell you, you're going to enjoy it. 
So till right next time, thank you so much, Elliot. Again, I really appreciate it. Everybody who's listening, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe on the YouTube channel, hit like, help that algo.